Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park West. I'm Ron Nicoletti. It is Wednesday afternoon. We have eight races on opening day of the Fall Turf Festival. Let's check out those track and weather conditions. The main track fast, the turf course firm, the first race, a claimer. These are three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races. Seven horses will go to the post. The off-time favorite, number six, Cantana's Edge. Racing at Gulfstream West. Katana's Edge breaks the line well. On the outside, King Morrow comes away with some tactical speed. Away into the top trio is High Dandy. Ilferoni is down toward the inside, followed by Judas Sunset, third last. Second last, 77 stone. And the early trailer is Mass Approval. They circle the first turn with Katana's Edge getting to a clear advantage of a length and a quarter. King Morrow is racing from second. Ilferoni at the inside third. High Dandy is back to fourth, followed by Judas Sunset, then Mass Approval, and 77 stone. Separated by six and a half lengths and the run past the opening quarter. The leader is Katana's Edge on the barn change in front at the five eights by a length now. Racing in second is King Morrow while under restraint. Two and a half clear Vilferoni third. Back to fourth and high dandy. Then comes mass approval outside of Judas Sunset. 77 stone is last. Half a mile away in the season opener, and with the advantage, it's still Katana's Edge, a length and a quarter. On the outside, King Morrow is still second, but creeps a bit closer. El Ferroni has had a box seat so far, tries to parlay it while three lengths off the lead. The rest are starting to struggle, led by High Dandy and Judas Sunset. Race on past the 5 sixteenths. Here's King Morrow issuing the challenge to Katana's Edge. Vasquez and King Morrow put ahead in front. Katana's Edge trying to cut the corner and fight back second. Four clear of Il Ferroni, third, and they're at the top of the stretch. Katana's Edge floated off the rail. Ilferoni has a shot up the inside. King Morrow down the center. Has the momentum with an eighth of a mile to go. King Morrow strides to a two-length lead. Ilferoni at the inside is trying to get after him second. That's all for Katana's Edge. With the advantage, it's King Morrow. Ilferoni is game and trying to come on late, but King Morrow has the lead. King Morrow will win it. Second, Ilferoni. Third, Judas Sunset. The pace setter, Katana's Edge, was fourth. And that's the opener of GPW. Number seven, King Morrow, very game in victory for uh, rider Miguel Vasquez, owned and trained by Juan Arias. That horse paid $7 even to win. Race two, on the turf course, listed as firm, five furlongs. These are claimers, fillies and mares, three-year-olds in upward, which have never won three races. A full field of nine runners, the off-time favorite, number nine, Danessa again. And they're off. From the inside, Touch of Quality gets the first call from Wanda Girl, who comes away to race in second. Rachette's on her outside and now moves to be third. Trap Me Later and Danessa again are next with Miss Lamborghini at the inside. Length and a half back to Hug a Tree, two clear of Love Flute. Quick Lucky Coco is last of all, less than half a mile from home. Up front, long shot Touch of Quality has the lead. Here's the big favorite, Danessa again, moving to be second. Rachette at the inside is third, followed by Trap Me Later fourth. Then Hug a Tree to the outside of Miss Lamborghini. Wanda Girl's lost a few spots trying to stay close as love flute five ahead of quick lucky coco and they're at the top of the stretch danessa again on the outside touch of quality battles back rachette swings wide for the drive miss lamborghini's at the inside love flute trying to punch home late down the center and hug a tree they're swarming in here wonder girls now back running again and she's launching at the leader and that leader is still danessa again but wonder girl has powered past love flute into the clear wonder girl will win it I think Love Flute is second. It's close for third. Touch of quality or Danessa again. Number six, Wanda Girl closes to win it for Kendall D. Stanley, trained by Fernando Arreo, ridden a victory today by Emisial Jaramillo. The early daily double, seven and six, paid $59.40. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have race number three.
Welcome back. Third race, a six furlong sprint. These are claimers, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races. The off-time favorite, number five, Touche. And they're off. Good start for Derby Day Darling, who heads off for a clear advantage from Jubilant, who comes away in the top flight. Touche in the green cap marches forward. Blue Whale down toward the rail. Back fifth early is So Fresh, ahead of She's a Princess. The early trailer is just a coyote. Down the back stretch they go. Derby Day Darling and Edgar Zayas calling the shots up front. They lead by a length and a quarter. Touche is racing from second. Blue Whale at the inside. On the outside and Jubilant from fourth. Two better than So Fresh, who's back to fifth. Then just a coyote and She's a Princess. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. Just less than three furlongs to go. With the advantage, it's still Derby Day Darling by two. Touche is still second. Blue Whale is third. Jubilant's not going anywhere. She's back to fourth. Running on from fifth is So Fresh. The West Arrest are too far behind as Derby Day Darling has them strung out. Quarter of a mile left to get. Derby Day Darling turns for home on top by two and a half. Whip out on Touche to try to get to her in the concluding stages. Blue Whale's on the outside. So Fresh up the inside. Final eighth of a mile. Derby Day Darling strong up front. She leads by three. Touche is second. Down the inside and so fresh. 16th to go. Nobody's getting to Derby Day Darling. Blue Whale is laden up into second. Derby Day Darling won. It's close for second. I think it's Blue Whale over Touche. Fourth is so fresh. Then Jubilant. Nice score by number six Derby Day Darling for Black Acre Farms Incorporated trained by Kathleen O'Connell and ridden a victory by Edgar Zyers. That horse paid $8.00 and 20 cents to win. The fourth race, seven and one half furlongs on the turf. These are maiden claimers, $35,000 the claiming price. Full field of 11 go to the post with the off time favorite number six, Nightwatch. And they're off. From between horses, that's Trixie's time who begins the best. Secret of Life moves to challenge. Far outside, Nola 300. Tapping on the brakes there was Nola 300 as Bright Side of the Road got sent forward. It's a length and a half back to now it's nine. Then back to Painted Image ahead of Night Watch. She's in the yellow blinkers and she's about seven lengths off the lead. To her inside is Zal's Dreams and the two at the back are seeking it all and to Marie. Around the first turn they go as the rain starts to pick up as they head into the backstretch run. Sweet Blossom comes away with the lead. On the outside and now second. That's Trixie's time. Bright side of the road is third. Secret of Life has been taken in hand to race from fourth. Two back to fifth and painted image. Then comes Nola 300 ahead of now it's nine and Zal's Dreams. Night Watch, the favorite, is still about nine lengths off the lead while third last. Two Maria's at the back with seeking it all and there's half a mile left to run. They swing around the far turn now. Sweet Blossom maintains control to Two and a half. Bright side of the road is there. Second. Now Secret of Life gets started. Painted Image is going to try to follow her with Zal's Dream. Now it's nine and Night Watch need to get going. They're still better than ten lengths off the lead as Sweet Blossom has them strung out. Top of the lane. Edgar Zayas and Sweet Blossom turn first with the lead. Secret of Life off cover and into the clear. Second on the far outside. Night Watch tries to rally. Now it's nine. Ducks to the inside with Painted Image. Final eighth of a mile. Zal's Dreams is now coming after the leader and and Zal's Dreams is going to take on Sweet Blossom in deep stretch. Zal's Dream driving to the lead. Zal's Dreams going away. Sweet Blossom was second. Secret of Life finished third. Then Two Marie and Painted Image. The long shots continue with number three, Zal's Dreams, winning it and paying $16.80. Owned by Robin Team Show Racing Corporation. Trained by Rodolfo Garcia and ridden to victory today by Semi Camacho. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have race five. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Go Zipper blows them away with an eye opening performance. Odds of again has won. Go Zipper kicking clear. Judy the beauty. Welcome back. Race five, a six and one half furlong sprint. These are claimers, Phillies and Mayors, three year olds and upward full field of 10. The off time favorite, number nine, Scorched Earth. And they're off. 
Two Diamonds begins well. There goes Miss Surprise quickly up to challenge down at the inside. Your speed from Magnato Go. Magnato Go and Miss Surprise. Miss Surprise takes an outright lead. Up on the outside, Scorched Earth is now second and poised to strike early. Away in third, Magnato Go. Then comes Hurricane Roberta on her outside. Tropical Runnings. Fultanazo's off the speed. Not happy about it either. Throwing her head around ahead of Two Diamonds, who's three clear of all this jazz, who's three clear of Peaceful Warrior Girl. And Michelle's laugh is a long way behind with less than half a mile to go. Miss Surprise calls the shots to the far turn, leads a length and a quarter. Scorched Earth, the nearest pursuer, second, four clear of Magnato, go third. Fontanaza ridden, trying to gain, then it's back to the outside and Hurricane Roberta. This leader gets away a bit. Miss Surprise at the 5 16th, now by four. Scorched Earth is second, Magnato go third, then Hurricane Roberta. Nobody making any impression from the backfield with a quarter of a mile left to go. Miss Surprise has this to throw away off the turn with a five length lead. Magnato go and Scorched Scorched Earth still second and third. Hurricane Roberta to the outside. Eighth of a mile to go. Miss Surprise still well in command. She's five on top. She has absolutely no dangers, and this is all over. It's all Miss Surprise, a gate-to-wire winner, and an impressive one at that. She widens late to win by about six. It's a very good battle for second, entirely too close to call. The photo involves Magnato Go, Scorched Earth, and Hurricane Roberta. Number eight, Miss Surprise certainly surprises and pays $19.60 to win for Mar Racing Stable Incorporated, trained by Angel Medina, and that gives Jackie Miguel Vasquez two wins on the, the afternoon. That exact eight and two for $2 paid, $403.20. The sixth race, five furlongs on the turf. Claim is three-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races. Scratch the seven, scratch the eight. The jockey on the four, Little Shackleford, is J.J. Gonzalez. And they're off. From between horses, Crimson Spade gets the first call and goes looking for the lead. Warpipe down at the rail moves to challenge from second. Out of their third is our boss. Followed by Ballistico. Then comes Little Shackelford. Copper Vessel is between horses. Duroc is four wide. Moonstricking is next and five to the trailer. Cleave. They pass the half mile and move to the far turn. Leonel Reyes taking no prisoners aboard Crimson Spade, who leads it by three and a half. Up on the inside, it's Warpipe still there for second. Back to third is Ballistico trying to run home to rock that little Shackelford copper vessels been sent wide as they move to the top of the stretch two lengths better than a dropping back moon stricking off the turn and the stretch drive with the advantage crimson spade by two on the outside war pipe tries to get after him second with an eighth of a mile to go crimson spade two and a half war pipe second our boss third late run from copper vessel but they're in deep stretch crimson spade still clear and crimson spade goes gate to wire to win it by two and a half war pipe second third Copper Vessel finishing fourth with Zarbos. Number five, Crimson Spade scores for trainer Rick Creel, owned by Janice Creel and ridden to victory today by Lionel Reyes. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it'll be our seventh and feature race of the afternoon. Passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best. Welcome back for our seventh and feature race of the afternoon. It's an allowance optional claimer, a $47,000 purse for three-year-olds and upward scratch number seven, Ercolano, and number eight, Motown Man. And they're off. Bell Tapasseri wins the start from down toward the inside. Inhibition is showing speed. Apostle won't be far away. Apostle marches third with Max's Causeway back to fourth. All Golden saves ground next alongside Rupp. Oh, my warrior got spun very wide, and the early trailer is past the butter. Around the first turn they go, and it's Bell Tapasseri who now crosses over and leads the way by a length. Racing in second is inhibition, back to third is all golden. Apostle up on the outside in the purple silks is now fourth from between horses, Max's Causeway. Then Rupp, who's down toward the rail, ahead in front of Oh My Warrior, and two and a half to the trailer past the butter. 
down the back stretch and past the 5 8. Bell Tapasseri leads by a half. Inhibition is there. Second, Apostle is a three wide third. Back to fourth is All Golden. Then Max's Causeway ahead of Oh My Warrior. Past the butter tries to get underway, and Rupp is now dropped back last, separated by six lengths in the run with less than half a mile to go. With the advantage, Bell Tapasseri, three parts of a length. On the outside, that's inhibition. Second, three wide. Apostle giving the green light to go after the top two. He's within a neck of the lead now. Trying to run onto his back is Oh My Warrior. Down at the inside, it's all golden as they race to the top of the stretch. Three wide, Apostle up on the outside. Bell Tapasseri fights on, and Bell Tapasseri still has the lead. Apostle on the outside tries to get after him. Late run down the center from Oh My Warrior with Rupp as Bell Tapasseri drifts right into the path of Apostle. Apostle's trying to right his course and go right back at him. Here's Apostle on the outside of Bell Tapasseri. Bell Tapasseri still drifting. That's good news for Apostle. Apostle for a neck in front. Bell Tapasseri game, but second best to Apostle. Apostle won it. Bell Tapasseri was second. Third was Rupp. Fourth was Inhibition. Number six, Apostle would not be denied. What a game performance. Paid $4.80 to win. Owned by Carl and Kathy Glassman. Trained by Eddie Plesey Jr. Edgar Zayas gets his second riding victory of the day. The eighth and final race, seven and a half furlongs on the turf. These are maiden claimers. Phillies and Maz scratch the two, the seven, 13, 15, and 16. The jockey on the one, Jose Batista. And runners away. Good start for I'm Just Fancy from the outside, and Paco's wasting no time on using her speed to try to get over to the inside. Risky, Risky, Risky comes away with speed, and Dixie Legend is not far away. Hoxie, the first-timer, is a bit wide while trying to take over as they run around the first turn. I'm Just Fancy leads Dixie Legend by neck. Risky, Risky, Risky is backed off to race third, right where she wants to be early. Back to fourth and journey east. Then Duchess of Sparkle, trip to queen between horses. Down at the inside goes Tropical Gold, a length and a half better than Hoxie. Down to her inside goes Classy, of course, ahead of War Beauty. She's second last, and the early trailer is Alta Bambina. Down the back stretch they go, and still up top. The leader is now a Dixie Legend by a length and a quarter. Risky, Risky, Risky is up to second. I'm just fancy is third. Trip to Queen. The gray is now moved to be fourth. Back to fifth is Journey East. Then comes Tropical Gold. Trying to progress next is Hoxie. Classy, of course, is at the rail. Duchess of Sparkle calls it a day. War Beauty at the inside. Alta Bambina is last. Around the far turn, three-eighths remains. Risky, risky, risky. Tackled by Trip to Queen at the five-sixteenths. Back to third and trying to run home is Dixie Legend with Tropical Gold and they're at the top of the stretch. Risky, risky, risky. Cuts the corner. On the outside, Trip to Queen. Surfacing to take the lead. Down the center, Tropical Gold. Hoxie in full stride down the far outside with an eighth of a mile to go. And with the advantage, it's Trip to Queen by two. Tropical Gold is second. Hoxie on the outside. Hoxie's trying to get Trip to Queen. Trip the queen clear trip the queen wins hoxie second tropical gold third then risky 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 number 10 trip the queen trips out to win the nightcap and pays nine dollars and 20 cents to win owned by maddie martin trained by Safi joseph jr ridden a victory today by luis a castillo in the pick five five of five pay two thousand three hundred thirty two dollars and fifty cents Four or five, twenty-seven dollars and eighty-five cents. In the rainbow six, six of six, no singles paid three thousand eight hundred twenty-six dollars and sixty-six cents. The carryover going into Thursday's card, three thousand two hundred and eighty dollars and two cents. And that wraps up Wednesday's card. We're right back here at Gulfstream Park West on Thursday with eight races on tap. Our first race post one fifteen p.m. Good night and good luck. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack. I'm so tired.